If you're having meetings, if you're having interviews in person, or they're picking up their supplies every day, or you have a car for them, whatever it is, you're going to have to have some type of space at some point. But with this business, you don't need that office space um, at all, unless you just want to rent out a rework to go work there for yourself. But that's yeah. not necessary at all. Yeah, another thing about the office space is that when you are working with people who are always in the field, they don't need there's no check-in points, right? So mm -hmm. I want to also make it clear, too, because we don't know where these videos go on YouTube. So we may get a bunch of people who are just looking to start a cleaning business, and they may find the YouTube uh, video. If you guys don't follow us on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe. And also stay up to date on our content, too. Comment. Very important. Mm -hmm. And while we're here, we're going to take a quick break. If you guys are interested in starting a six- or seven-figure cleaning business, check out Cleaning Business University. Uh, we'll give you the A to Z curriculum on how you could do that, how to start a remote cleaning business without cleaning Whoa, any slow down. Without cleaning fast. any <laughs> houses. Because I know that, like, the back of my hands are kind of, like, yeah, yeah, through yeah. it. Yeah, no, I, I'm not you know, saying anything. We both speak fast, but just sitting listening, I'm like, you got to slow down. They're not you know what I may do? I may just start taking the clips of that and just posting it in episodes so I don't have to repeat it. Repeat it every time. I mean, that's totally fine. You see how we, we're learning and growing along with you guys? That's totally fine. You, oh, I mean, that's a great example about growing and learning, just even with the podcast. Yeah. If you've been watching with us since day one, we're on episode 40 plus. Um, things have changed. <laughs> if you're watching visually, things have changed. Maybe our audio has changed. I don't know how it's, if it sounds different for you guys, but things have changed. Just talking about, you know, not knowing it all and growing different cameras, different sound, different background, all of that. So Yeah. So... You don't have to start in a major metropolitan city mm -hmm. or you don't have to start in your backyard, too. So we right. recommend you starting. We do recommend it you depends. starting in your backyard, though, because we feel like you would know your backyard better than most than any other area than any other area. So mm -hmm. there's, a, there's two nuances of this. Yes, you can start it in other cities and states. And you don't have to start it in your own city or state, meaning the one that you reside in currently. Mm -hmm. But we do recommend you start it in your backyard because like, let's say. For Dallas, we live in Dallas, Texas, right? If we were started in Oklahoma, yes, we could start another business. We, yes, we could have started there, but we know the areas that our cleaners are going to go to. We know the areas mm -hmm. that they don't want to go to. We know the areas that are most affluent when it comes to money. We know the areas that are too far from the metropolitan Center, area of yeah. Dallas. So there's nuances of uh, starting, you know, where you are locally and also starting in different states. And both are definitely possible since we said you don't need to be in the state you start in too. Yeah, and especially for us, this was our first business, so we wanted it close, 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 yeah. very close to us. So, you know, there's some people that are investors and they, you know, they may have properties in different states and they have different, so they may know areas and are comfortable with, I don't need to be at that place to know anything. That's fine, too. But yeah, most of us, that, most people or most of our students that are getting started, maybe this is your first business as well, um, and you have just a better understanding of the areas that you're in. So Yeah. Yeah. Uh, knowing how to, so small city, big city. This is another big one that people ask us about a business plan. And I'm like, I never even seen a business plan to be quite honest. So, um, now I will say it does depend on the business, obviously that, you know, I guess if it's a tech company or certain things that you're starting, you probably need a business plan, but for the cleaning business, you do not need a business plan. You can simply write things out and bullet it to say like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And that's exactly how we did it when we started. And that's your business plan. If down the line, you eventually wanna write something, sure. But that is another thing that I feel like is people procrastinating and giving, not an excuse, but like, oh, I need to write this business plan before I get started, why? Mm-hmm. What is the business plan providing for your customers, for your clients, for your contractors? What is it? What is it providing? Are you? Asking we're waiting. <laughs> not you, that we'll get a response, them? but I'm just saying uh, a business plan is not something that is necessary for the cleaning business. Like I said, they may may be certain businesses that it is, but for this specific one, we would say no. So we started. We actually did have a business plan for the cleaning business. What was it? Where is it? And we threw it away because it wasn't necessary. It was because you thought that we thought this is what you needed for. A business. We thought <laughs> it, we thought it was it was necessary. And even when we go back to like things, you don't need to start any business like mm -hmm. a business plan is just you another form of procrastination. So mm -hmm. we were spending time. You don't remember how we said, oh, we want to do 10,000 in revenue. Here's how many clients we need. Here's how many houses we need to clean. Yeah. We wrote this whole elaborate 
But we do that now and just like write the number. That's what I'm saying. So we wrote this whole, but we did that but to start. Remember, we said you don't need this to start a business. Mm -hmm. So we wrote this plan out before we started a business on how we we're going to get 10,000 clients, how we we're going to get $10,000 in revenue, mm -hmm. how we're going to get you know, 200 clients, but whatever the number was. Mm -hmm. And we sat there and we were trying to figure it out based on this, this plan. And I always say that I would rather you take the action than sitting down being motivated by papers or reading or books or whatever, mm -hmm. because you're going to learn That's more fair. from that action. You're going to learn more from going out there and actually getting the work done. You're going to learn more from your client base. You're going to learn from your mistakes more than more importantly than your wins. And you're going to learn like, all right, that business plan didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Cause you're going to use that as a crutch to not get started. So you're going to sit down and write this, I, f I went to this, uh, what was it? Oh, I'm trying to remember. I went to this class. Uh, you do you remember when I sat down before we started the business and I drove to this spot in the morning and it, it was like a business class? No, I don't remember. It was, I was no. sitting down with this guy. What was it called? I can't remember the name of it. But I signed up for this, this, this free class and they teach you how to start a business from people who've been in business for decades, right? Okay. And I went to this class. I took off of work, actually. I went to this class. And it was like a one-on-one -on -one setting. Me and this, this, this older white guy who ran a marketing business mm -hmm. decades ago. And I was talking about how to market my business. And Social media wasn't in his plan, I'm assuming. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. He had no idea. He had no idea how we were running this cleaning business online. And, I'm and that was in probably 20, we started, 20, 2018, this, probably. Might have been 20. Yeah, it was 2018. And I'm sitting explaining to him how we run our cleaning business online. And he's like, wow, you got a good idea going here. And I'm, <laughs> you're I'm like, like, I'm not the first. I'm like, you're supposed to be saying, yeah. I'm not the first and I won't be the last. But yeah. I'm sitting here trying to figure out how you can help me. And I'm explaining my business model to you. So you're like, uh. <laughs> it was, it was an, I don't want to say it was a waste of time, but he learned a lot. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say he learned a lot, but it also made me realize that me sitting there trying to write it down, trying to get all the advice in the world versus just doing the business can actually be a form of procrastination as well. Mm -hmm. Doing and the work. Yeah, and that was like me doing the work. I learned a lot more from doing the work than actually sitting down talking to somebody about doing the work. So that's another thing too. You want to make sure you're actually doing the work versus just sitting around trying to procrastinate and and you're talking about the work versus actually doing it. So yeah. that's another big point. Um, another one that we speak about is like having a nice logo. And if you're listening, you're probably or a nice like, website. what? Or a nice website. You're like, like, what? What are you talking about? Let me tell you. I, I can tell you firsthand because when we first started, first business, we were stuck on the logo, the Colors, color the of the logo. How does it look? We were stuck on that, like asking other people. Now that we are five years in the business and have had multiple businesses, we see how foolish it is. But when you're first starting out, it doesn't sound foolish because you're like, someone needs to see this. They're going to love it. Once again, for this specific business, because if you're a graphic designer, maybe your logo matters, right? Yeah. Or if you're, if there's certain things that it may need to stand out. But for this, ain't nobody checking for that. Ain't nobody checking to say, oh, your logo does not have a broom in it, so I'm not going with that cleaning business. Nobody's saying like, oh, well, why is your logo uh, purple? Well, if it's pink, it may look sus. But why is your logo purple? Why is it not green? Like, no one is saying that. Trust me, okay? Trust me as someone that's done this firsthand. Spending time on your logo, don't do it. Spending too much money on your logo, don't do it. I know people that they say like, well, I'm going to have my graphic designer friend do it. We'll give them $300. Child, spend twenty to fifty dollars on Fiverr and call it a day. Okay, call it a day. <laughs> and that's another thing too. Yes, there are certain colors that that scream it's emotion psychology. and psychology and all of that mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. And we'll sit there trying to figure that out all day. But at the end of the day, that's not going to bring they you more clients. It's not going to bring you more customers. And more importantly, it's not going to make you any money. So you're mm -hmm. sitting there trying to figure out: Does blue <laughs> is blue a cleaning color, or is, or is blue yellow? a? You need to figure out. Get something done. And we did this like we change it if it doesn't work. Like that's another thing. Yeah, you act like you're married to it. You're literally acting like you can't change the logo if it came down to it. You can, <laughs> if it's that bad or it's bothering you that much, you can change it. But I promise you, people don't care. We don't care. The most important thing <laughs> is to get it out there, get it done, so that you could revise it, like you said, make yeah. those changes, come back, and like you, you know go what. Along. And going back to just everything that we're doing, we're literally telling you things that we did when we started that we mm -hmm. don't do anymore that we're learning. Yeah. In business, entrepreneurship, life, family. It helps you for the other businesses. It's, it's, it's everything that we, we've gone through. We're only talking about our experiences. So 
we go back to the podcast. You guys, if you've been here longer, you can see the transition. You can see the changes. And I'm sitting there saying mm -hmm. to Janoka, oh, yeah, in a couple months, maybe we get another camera so we have another angle mm -hmm. for the podcast. Mm -hmm. But until we get the other camera, you're going to get this straight ahead camera right here. <laughs> and if you listen to the audio, we may get better mics. You may hear, sir, you may hear the long guy outside, but we're not paying the $400 <laughs> on the individual mics yet. But we know down the line, all right, this is where we're going to go. Yeah. We can make these changes. Like, we'll sit here in front of three lights right now. If you're watching on YouTube, you can't see the lights. But mm -hmm. we got three different lights. And then I know, all right, the more expensive light is one big, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's a big overhead light. But we're not there yet. We It's okay to make changes, make iterations as you go along. The most important thing is to get out there, start making money, put the product out there, because your first product won't be your last. And your last product won't probably won't be your first. Freaking Apple... Brings out a phone every year, and they change one little thing. <laughs> yeah. And they are a trillion dollar company. They change one little thing and keep it pushing, and people buy and keep it pushing. Either buy or you don't, right? So they make the tweaks as they go along. There's no way they could have had an Apple uh, iPhone 14 15 years ago. They just weren't that advanced. And that's the same thing for your company. You won't be that advanced at the beginning. Your chapter one to my chapter 20 and vice versa, right? And so growing it as you go along, any business will be important. Different things change. People change. Social media changes. Technology, technology, changes. technology changes. So many things change. So many things change for your business that you're going to have to adapt and move on. And, th and that's essentially what we're saying with some of these things that we're listing. Yeah. So startup capital, you don't need a lot of money, a lot oh, of money yeah. to start, especially your cleaning business. Especially. We started our we started our cleaning business. We said it was all the time less than fifteen hundred dollars, and we've grown into over a million dollars in revenue. Mm -hmm. And that's that ROI. And that's it, not even at one uh, at one point. Uh, what am I trying to say? What? Not in one city. You'll oh have yeah, to we didn't over. we didn't come out and say we, you're not gonna come out of fifteen hundred right away. It's like gradually to get things done. Your LLC, your website, to market to clients online. Maybe you decide to go free. Maybe you don't do any market online. Yeah. You know, to find you know that's what that is. Yeah, so you don't need a lot of money to start up, and especially in a business like this where your overhead is low, your capital is low. You don't have any office, you don't have any, you don't have any offices, any supplies, any employees. Mm -hmm. Your overhead capital is going to be a lot lower than actually starting a physical location or a physical uh, business. Mm -hmm. Our business is ran completely online, so that's something else to be mindful of too. So yeah, the money—it's not a lot of money when you think about a business. Um, so yeah, so unless you're going into like even. Unless you're going into like something like real estate or something that's heavy capital to start and yeah. grow and scale. But if you are, let's say you are, you're strict on money or you're tight on money or you don't have the funds right now. Think about something that's a low cost startup that you could have, you could put more time and effort in than money up front and you can grow that thing. When we start our cleaning business, we put more time and effort a up lot front. Of time. Yes. So that we didn't have to come out of pocket. Because remember, if you guys may or may not know, mm -hmm. we started our cleaning business. The goal was to pay off $114,000 of debt. Yeah. So we didn't have a lot of money to go out and put into this business. So we put more time and effort into the business than we did money. Now we put more money into the business than effort to continue mm -hmm. to grow and to scale it. Because we have the we have the capital. We have the investment. We have the we have the funds to do so. Well, especially when you're starting something. If you can put more time and effort up front, it will save you capital. And then eventually you could grow to the point where you're in. You're just reinvesting money back into the business, and now you can take that that investment and that capital to grow it on its own. So time is money. You're gonna pay in time. You're gonna pay in money. Absolutely. So just to recap, some of the things you do not need to start a cleaning business. We mentioned cleaning supplies, office spaces. You don't need employees. We use contractors. You don't need to know how to clean. You don't need to know everything about the business. You don't need to be in a big city. Um, you don't need a business plan. You don't need a nice logo, and you don't need a lot of money. Okay, those are the things that you don't need uh, for the cleaning business.